hi and welcome to uh, episode two of the allotment program, um, also known as the allotment gardening program and the gardening program, <laughs> depending on how I'm feeling that day. Um, it's a bit better weather today, uh, it was really rainy last time, <coughs> but the sun's been out, it's, it's really dry and warm, it's just a little bit windy, so if there's any uh, you know, interference with the sound I, I apologise, but it is a bit breezy today. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of outside stuff today, so uh, have a little look around, this is our allotment, as you can see there's a lot of work needs doing, um, as I'm sure you're aware, an allotment's uh, a work in progress, it's, it's never finished, and it's just, uh, you just go year, year after year, making improvements as you can, so let's have a little look around the allotment. Uh, if we start at this side, we've got three... Um, gooseberry bushes there, they were only planted this year so uh, we weren't expecting to get much of a crop off of them but luckily we've got a couple of little gooseberries that have come through so that's <coughs> you know that's a good sign it shows that they've taken well or at least that one has nothing on this one yet and that one's the smallest of the three but they, they've got chance you know they've only been in for this uh, for a few months like I say um, next to them we've got our onions as you can see there's loads of weeds in amongst here we need to get down and get all of these out because all that's going to happen is uh, these weeds are going to take all the nutrients and the water from the soil and we want it to be going into our onions so that's uh, a work in progress and then uh, further on from there these are our peas um, as you might be able to see we've got a lot of pods forming now um, not fattened up yet though as you can see from that one you know Still got quite a way to go, at least another week I should think. I just opened one of these before and it only had uh, really tiny peas in, so better, better to let them swell up a bit um, before you uh, go ahead and, and pull a, you know, a good crop off them. Uh, and plus they don't go very far anyway, even if they are quite fat. You're doing a lot of shelling uh, of peas for, for a small amount of peas, but the constellation is a taste absolutely beautiful, so it makes it worthwhile. Then next to these we've got some more onions that uh, also need weeding. Um, over here, this is our blackberry bush. I planted this just from a, a smaller bush that was growing elsewhere on the allotment. And this has done really well. This has been in a couple of years now, but all of these flowers, uh, potential berries, this is where your, your, uh, you know, your blackberries form. For each one of these buds is a, is a potential berry, That's, uh, so that should be quite a good crop. This doesn't take a lot of maintenance, this plant. As you probably know, that a blackberry plant uh, bush will just grow anywhere. But all I tend to do is, when, uh, when you see these ones coming out, that don't have any flowers on, these are what they call uh, like feelers, I think, anyway, that's what I call them. These ones are, are looking for new places to spread the bush to, uh, to other sites. So, so all I do is take these and then, as far back as I can get it, without cutting my hands to ribbons, just trim these ones, the ones that have got no flowers on, and then that'll let all the, the goodness from the plant and the root that it's drawing, uh, that it's drawing up just go directly into the berries. So I always trim these. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a fat one. But again, it's got no flower sites on it. And if you can imagine how much of, en of the energy from the soil that's taking to, to spread the bush and try and find a new, a new site, um, unnecessarily, then you know you need to be trimming these off because that's taking a lot of a lot of the plant's energy. So that's all I do. Obviously, grab the uh, nettles that are in between when you can. Bits of dead wood like this need to come off. So that's got a few little bud sites on it, so I'll leave that one. This one hasn't, so I'll trim that one. And that's it, basically. That's about all the maintenance that uh, a blackberry bush like this really needs. Obviously if it starts spreading out this way too much I'll trim it back, but these are doing so well I don't want to be cutting these off now, they're, they're absolutely ready to, to burst with seeds, uh, with berries, sorry, so, so that's the blackberry, and uh, we're going to have a look at the potatoes, right, these are our potatoes that we've got in, um, these plants have been in for about a month and a half, two months now, um, and as you can see they're doing quite well, they could be larger, but um, again it's a case of getting getting rid of all these weeds in between which is a, it's just an ongoing job at the allotment it's, it's never ever done basically you know it's just an ongoing thing the 
the more you do, the better. But they're always going to come back. But uh, like I said before, all of these weeds and junk in between are going to be taking the nutrients and the water from the soil that would otherwise be going directly into your plants and the, the vegetables at the end, you know, the, the, uh, the potatoes on the roots. So, so it is important to get all these out. I mean, we need a good, a good uh, half a day or a day down here just on weeding. But as I say, it's one of those ongoing things. So that, it'll get done eventually. Um, and at the side of them, and, and here and, and here, we've got potatoes that have just been planted um, within a week ago. Not, they haven't been in long, so what I tend to do with planting potatoes is I'll, uh, all this will have obviously started off level, and I'll just make a bit of a, uh, scrape a bit of a channel with the hoe, so there's a little bit of a, a dip. And I put the potatoes in more or less at ground level, rather than dig down and plant them, because when you come to crop them, digging down and you're potentially going to ruin your potatoes like as I'm sure you're aware if, if you've grown potatoes before you always end up forking a couple but if you leave them more or less at ground level and build up your your furrow on top you know that you never need to dig really far down to get at them so it makes them a little bit easier for cropping plus it, it just saves the job of coming back as soon as they start showing through you need to be covering potatoes obviously so I, I, I pile them up straight away like this just to give me a little bit of a longer uh, time span before I need to come and attend to them again um, but yeah, given a you know a few weeks, four weeks maybe, there'll be some plants on here like there are there. So it's good. It means that we can stage the crops, so we're not just cropping all of our potatoes on one day, for instance. You know, and you've just got sacks of potatoes one day, and then a couple of weeks later they've run out. So better off to stage them a little bit, so that you get a, a crop for, for a longer period of the year. Right, moving on. These plants that you can see here on these canes. Uh, raspberry bushes that I planted myself. Um, it was towards the end of last year. From a, uh, they were on a disused allotment around the uh, around the allotment plot. So anything that's on there was free to take. So I just dug up a few of those. So I put a few in there. There's a, there's a few just here. You know the healthy plants. They're doing well. I think I might have been a bit ambitious with the wire because they haven't got that high yet. But uh, you know the healthy plants are gonna. They're, they're well established now and they're definitely gonna stay there. For, uh, for years to come, so that's good. Over here, got a few strawberry plants in pots. They're, they're not doing too bad, we're getting a few strawberries on them, but they're getting uh, a little bit eaten, gone a little bit manky here and there where bugs are getting them and what have you, but it don't matter. They, they, they were free anyway, they were given to us from uh, from another allotment hall, they kindly so. So they're there. Uh, this is uh, another blackberry. This is the same story as the one over there, it's just anything that ain't got a, a flower site on it, a bud site, for me, can just be trimmed, uh, trimmed back <coughs> to give more uh, opportunity to the, to the actual flower sites. Um, also, you've got to watch out for stuff like this on the allotment. So it's like a, I can't remember the actual name, but it's like a creepy vine thing, and this goes around Morning, all, sorry. well, pretty much anywhere it can, and as you can see, it wraps itself around whatever plant you've got growing and it, it's guaranteed to kill it it's going to pull it down it, it takes all the nutrients from the soil and it pulls down the plant that you're actually wanting to grow so it's important that whenever you see that you've got to get that out and it, it does get everywhere you know it's you don't you don't spot it and by the time you see it there's it's almost too late there's, there's loads of it you know, there's, there's more there there this has got to come out really but as well as the obvious the the nettles and things that are always in between stuff but again it comes back to being the ongoing job of uh, allotment holding here's another uh, another feeler that can come off so that's all potential energy saved and back into the plant same again uh, coming this way there's a few more raspberries these are doing slightly better but they've been in a bit longer look and again you can see the creeping vine taking hold wherever it can. Uh, yeah, they've been in a bit longer, so a few fruits have come through, but looks like the birds have beaten us to them. But, uh, you know, potentially that's what we can expect, big, nice big lovely berries like that. Uh, that's another raspberry that's managed to establish. Uh, I never planted that one, but that's looking really good. And again, there's more of that creeping vine. It's not doing anyone any favours. 
Uh, and lastly, this one is a blackberry bush. This has been in a couple of years, and this is the first time we've seen any bar um, any berries on it. Blackcurrant. Uh, Blackcurrant, sorry, yeah. But there you go. So th there's actually some fruit on it this year. So that's a good sign. It, it means it's, you know, it's comfortable. It's established where it is. Uh, and that's it. That's, you know, that should be there for a, a long time to come. Uh, oh yeah, and that's it. Pretty much. Finally, just the honeysuckle plant that we planted. But we planted that when it was about that big. From uh, I think we got it at the market, one pound fifty or a pound. Planted it at the side of this post for here. And now, I don't know if you can see the the woody uh, stalk and the root sort of thing is really well established now. And that's spread all the way up there, it's spread really nicely. And that takes pretty much no maintenance, other than a few. They're really manky on the end. Such as this, covered in little bugs and things. You know, they could do to come out really, but... But that's just sort of grown to where it's got, just under its own power, so I haven't really done much with that, it's just sort of taken itself to that stage. So, so on our go. allotment, we were lucky enough to when, uh, when I first applied for the allotment, there was absolutely nothing uh, growing on here whatsoever, apart from this um, rhubarb bush, uh, rhubarb plant even. So that was a, a, nice, a nice bonus for me. Uh, I've taken plenty of rhubarb off this over the years. I'm not a huge fan, to be honest, but my family are, which is always a good thing about an allotment. There's always somebody uh, willing to take the, the fruit and the vegetables that you produce. It never gets wasted. So, what I do with the rhubarb, um, look for ones that are fairly reddish, bit of red going all the way up there. Uh, the red are the better, generally, from what I understand, but... But these are all perfectly viable uh, pieces. So what I do is I pull them straight up like that from the bottom of the plant. Now, when you're cooking rhubarb, this bit always gets uh, chopped off and thrown in the bin. So I prefer to just chop it down here, put that straight back on the floor from where it came, back into the middle of the plant, and that can just rot down where it is and just uh, you know contribute to the to the composting around the the plant as it is. And the leaves are obviously highly poisonous to eat, so um, I always trim them off down at the allotment, obviously, and put them into the compost, just leaving you a nice sticks of rhubarb like that. I'll just show you again that. So just get whichever one you're going to pick, and just steadily pulling it up. Trim off the end that's going to get trimmed anyway. Trim the leaf. Any black looking bits like that little bit can go. And there, just sticks of rhubarb, just like that. Right, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, second instalment of the allotment program. Just giving you a little tour of the uh, of our plot. Done a couple of jobs, and that leaves me a chance to get all my favourite uh, favourite pastime at the allotment, which is having a can and a cig near the pond. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.